tonight. Can you please project Psalm 95, verse 2 to 9? Psalm 95, verse 2. We are reading to verse 9. Psalm 95, verse 2. Says, verse 2 says, Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. Verse 3 For the Lord is the great God and the great King above all gods. Verse 4 In his hands are the deep places of the earth, the heights of the hills are his also. Verse 5, the sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry lands. Verse 6, oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Verse 7, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, verse 8, do not harden your heart as in the rebellion, as in the day of trial in the wilderness, verse 9, when your fathers tested me, they tried me, though they saw my work. And then can we read Psalm 107, verse 20? sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their distractions. And Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, For I know the thoughts I, that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thought of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. We are going to worship him. He says, come to his presence with thanksgiving and joy. Just begin to lift up your voice and just thank the Lord for another opportunity to be in his presence once again. Just lift up your voice and just thank him. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for another day. We thank you for another opportunity to be in your presence. Lift up your voice and just give him all the praise and the adoration, Lord. He is faithful, Lord. With a joyful heart, we come to your presence this afternoon. We say thank you, thank you on behalf of our family, on behalf of the church. We say thank you on behalf of the family. Of God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Maka padabada, Masa tebedede, Makaya debedede, Masa tadabada, Makaya debedede, Manta dabada, Makaya debedede, Masa tadabada. We thank you for the miracles that will come from the service. Makaya debedede, Masa tadabada, Makaya debedede, Masa tadabada, Makaya tebedede, Manta dabada. Da 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 da
We thank you for the manifestation of the spirit. Thank you for the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom, for the spirit of understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. And we're also going to thank the Lord for our pastors, um, our global lead pastor, Apostle Justice, our, our pastor Priscilla and Pastor William. We are going to thank the Lord for the word says he will give us shepherd after his own heart. So we are going to lift up our voice and just thank the Lord for giving us shepherds who are guiding us and teaching us. We thank you, Lord, for Apostle Justice Paul. We thank you for Pastor William. We thank you for Pastor Priscilla. We thank Thank you for the knowledge and understanding you have bestowed on them to impact in us, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We are going to thank the Lord for the word that is coming through the preacher this afternoon. Just begin to lift up your voice and thank God for the word. Because the word is coming with manifestations. Thank the Lord for this word. My <laughs> Lord, we thank you for the healing this word comes with. We thank you for the manifestations through the word. We thank you for restoration, Lord. We thank you for the word which is yet to restore our souls. Which is going to amend the broken heart. 
We thank you for the burdens that will be left in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' matchless name, amen. In the mood of worship, just begin to speak in tongues. Can we project um, John chapter 4? I'm going to read from verse 23. John chapter 4. Hallelujah. From verse 23. Now, um, we all, for those of us that have read this place in the Bible, Jesus went off with the Samaritan woman while he was sitting at the well. And uh, the conversation was quite intense. But one thing I love about the master is that he always have an answer. And the way he speaks does not bring offense, but he brings life and he brings answers to all your hidden questions. As probably you're asking God why. There's a way he answers you, not to offend you, but, but to tell you that this is the purpose why. The Bible recorded that when Jesus had already told the woman, started speaking to the woman, and the woman was like, you know what? I, 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 after she has already told, the, the, uh, told Jesus that I perceive you are a prophet, and he also went, she went further. She was like, our father, our father worship in this mountain. But he says that it is Jerusalem that we must go to worship. And one thing I love about the master, the master was that, you know what? We, you people worship what you know no, but we worship what we know. And the, the, the furthermore of this place in verse 23, but Jesus recognized to her that, you know what? Even though they have told you before that you need to go to Jerusalem to worship, but I am telling you right now that but the hour is coming and now is the hour. It is not tomorrow. It is not next tomorrow. It is not next month. It is not in December. It is not in next year. Now is the time. Now is the hour when the true worshiper, remember he said the true worshiper. The Bible said Jesus is the way, the truth and he's saying the true worshiper meaning those ones that belong to the Father. Those ones that belong to him. We worship God. We worship the Father in spirit and the Bible recorded that the spirit of God make us born again and he has given us new birth and that which is born again it is our spirit that is born again our spirit is born again and so this same spirit we now worship God in our spirit and in truth the Bible said Jesus is true and every word about Jesus is true hallelujah for the father seeketh such to worship him I want you to set your gaze on Jesus La Cabaloda. Everything he talks about is true, and everything about him is true. Jesus, we call you 
Jesus said those that must worship him that the Father seek and the true worshiper. I am a valuable Lord. I am a valuable Lord. Just to worship you, Lord. That is what I live for. That is what I live for. I want to worship you, Lord. I want to worship you, Lord. You alone deserve our worship. Something happened during this week. I was listening to a song that the Spirit of God has told me to minister. And I was listening to it. Then I said, ah, but Spirit of God, I don't even feel anything concerning this song. Yet you said I should minister it. Then he began to speak to me. He said, everything, every word that this person is singing concerning me. Is it true? I say yes, it's true. He said, then that's it. Because the weddings are truth, that's what you need. You don't need the feelings. You don't need the feelings. It's just the weddings. If it's Adona, it's just all you need. We call him El Shada. That's all you need to believe.
the living God for something I want you to know that is all sufficient. He can supply everything you need. Is there a new part of your body? Your kidneys, God can give you a new one. Is it finances? God can provide for you. Is he earth wise? Ah, Kale Badadada. Healing, healing, healing is the pride of the children. You are my earl.
of the heavens, the sound of creation shall kind of this year. We release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation. Yahweh is here. Yahweh. The sound of creation shall come Ade 
We release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation. Yahweh, yes, we cry, holy, 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 unto Yeshua, the kind of Yahweh. to him. Yield yourself, yield yourself. Yield yourself, yield yourself. separated for that which you have called them for, they will excel in it. They will burn for you. Amen. They will burn for you. Amen. Begin to encounter them in their private places. They might be looking like children. Hey, Ada, hey, Gaha. You said it's such you're looking for. Ah, hey, Gaha, Sada. Yes, it's the kingdom. Lord, use them for your glory. Use them for your grace. Pastor William to give us the word, then after that we'll, we'll continue. We want to break the flow.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are doing it for the Lord, I think you can do it better. Hallelujah. I can't feel the clapping. Do it better for the Lord. Do it better for the Lord. Do it better for the Lord. And with a big shout, hallelujah. Amen. Uh, first of all, just want to thank you for being with us today, fellowshipping with us today. God richly bless you for being here. I believe that you will not leave here the same. And if you are fellowshipping with us online too, please join us with everything. And I also believe that before the end of the service, if you have missed the part one, you will miss the part two. Hallelujah. Amen. And Apostle, I just want to say thank you for such an opportunity to allow us to be here today. Amen. Amen. And please just briefly, you can sit down and close your eyes whilst we pray. Lord, I thank you. You are the King of Kings. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. Holy Spirit, take control as you're doing. Take full control. We thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So this month, what's the theme of this month? We work Elohim. And it's all about the Holy Spirit. So we have learned that he is a person who uh, when Jesus Christ was going, he says, it's better that I go, that I will leave another one who is same as me, who will be your comforter, who will be your counselor, your helper, your standby. And then uh, we know in the book of Acts 2, the, the disciples went and wait and the, the day of, that's to call the day of Pentecost, and the Holy Spirit came on them. Uh, this week, we've been, been learning about the seven spirit of the seven manifestations of the Holy Spirit. So I will encourage you to join the morning and the evening prayer. We have uh, 14 days. I think one week is gone. We have one week more left. So I will encourage you to engage yourself in it because prayer, fasting, and giving are very important. Amen. Are you here at all? Yes. Amen. Yes. I bump into this, which I also want to let you know. In Job 26, 13, Job 26, 13, the Bible says, His Spirit made the heavens beautiful. Other verses say that the Spirit garnished the heavens. His Spirit garnished the heavens. So I was thinking about it. If the Holy Spirit, he is a spirit, he is a person, he, there is a, so many things that we are still learning to know about him. It says that he garnished the heavens. Other verses say that he decorated all the, the heavens. So what it means as we on earth, it means that if we yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit, he will make us beautiful. He will make us beautiful. So if we are looking for beauty anywhere, the Holy Spirit is also able to make us beautiful. I'm talking about, you know the beauty, the beauty that I'm talking about, not the one with that one. I'm talking about the beauty by the Holy Spirit. If I'm not clear, what I'm trying to say is that the Holy Spirit can make you beautiful. You don't need to add and believe in other material that if you add it on to yourself, that makes you beautiful. But the Holy Spirit makes people beautiful. Because if he can garnish the heavens, that means that he's also able to make you beautiful. Hallelujah. Amen. So, uh, when, when I was Oh, yes. Let me say this to you. Anytime we come here and we are saying, giving us a, um, a message, 
there are not just a message that we have just put one, two together and then come here and say. I spend a lot of time to know what to say because it is not my word. It is his word. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. So I want you to take notice of it and pay attention. Yield your spirit to it whilst the message is going on. So I, I, whilst I was, the Lord was, the Holy Spirit was leading me to prepare today. Uh, it's a message that came uh, for some couples of weeks ago. But then when I was preparing, I became aware that this month in the Jewish calendar, this month is the sixth month and it's called Adar. And what Adar means, it means strength and power. That's what Adar means. So there is Adar 1 and Adar 2. Adar 1 starts from 1st of March to the 10th of March. And Adar 2 starts with the 11th of March to 8th of April. I will, well, whilst we are going on, you will know the reason why this is very important. And the Jewish celebrate this because of the when they were able to defeat Haman. Esther and Mordecai was able to defeat Haman. And once we go on, you know why this is very important for today's service, which you have to really yield yourself to it. So the message for today is that the word is truth. The Holy Spirit is truth. Hallelujah. The truth that I'm talking about here. I'm not talking about the worldly, the fallen truth that they say. I'm talking about the word of God, which is truth. I'm talking about the, the truth as the totality of what our Lord Jesus Christ says. Not the truth of science saying that they, are, they have come up with the truth. But that's fact. Anything about our Jesus Christ is the truth. So that's the kind of truth that I'm talking about. And no, I won't say the truth is the totality of the Bible because there are certain things in the Bible which, for example, um, Job could say that he take it and give it. That's not who God is. So I won't say the totality of the Bible is the truth. But our Jesus Christ is the truth. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm begin by reading first john the bible says that or before i do that my main purpose or my role today that i'm going to try to explain that the word which is truth we know that jesus christ is the word and he is truth and also because he is the truth the holy spirit is also the truth meaning that if the the word is truth and the Holy Spirit is truth. That means that the, the word is truth. And the Holy Spirit is truth. And Jesus Christ is also the truth. But remember, he said he's going. He will send another comforter. The same as me. So the word is Jesus. The truth is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is also the word. Okay, so I'm reading John 1. It says that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. This is talking about Jesus Christ. And the word was God. So the word was with, with, with the law, with God, and the word was God. So here is telling us Jesus Christ is also God. And true says that he was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. And then 14 says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. All that is trying to tell us here 
is that, yes, in the beginning, the word, which is Jesus Christ, he was with God. And the same word, who is Jesus Christ, was God. And he was at the beginning. And through him, through God, through Jesus Christ, there was nothing that was made without them. And he says that in him was life. And that life was the light of men. And because of the light of men, because of that light, we, we keep on shining. We keep on shining. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And he says that this word, which is Jesus Christ, became flesh and it dwelt among us. So he became a human being and he was living among the people. So let us go and learn how this word became flesh. Because if he says he became flesh, then how did this word became flesh? In Luke, from Luke 1, 26. It says that now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. 27, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of God. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. I just want you to take this properly. He says, Luke 1, 26, he says that now in the sixth month, in the sixth month of the Jewish calendar as that we are in today, this is the month of Adar. And it's two. The, the first part is gone and the second part is gone. So it's, the, it's what? The power and strength. Remember, in this same month is when the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary. So is the same month according to Ada. So that's what we are in. But today, if you yield yourself, you'll be overshadowed. Hallelujah. You'll be overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. It says that to 27, to a virgin, to a, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored. You are, as you are sitting down, you are highly favored. You are highly favored. You are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Blessed are you all here and all who are fellowshipping with us online. 29 says, But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying. And considered what manner of greetings this was. 30. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. As you are sitting here, you have also found favor with God. You have found favor with God. You have found favor with God. You have found favor with God. Ah, you can do it better. You have found favor with God. Amen. And 31 says, And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son. As I'm speaking to you right now, anything that you are desiring of right now, the, you are, the conception has begun. Right now, it has begun. It has begun. Hallelujah. Amen. And he will be great and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob. Of his kingdom, there will be no end. This does not apply to only Jesus. It applies to you as well. He says that his kingdom will be no end as you are sitting down. Your kingdom, your realm also, will, there will be no end. Your realm, kingdom means realm. Your realm will not, there will be no end. I can't feel your shout at all. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Maybe if you are not sure that you are also in the realm of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 3, 21, it says that therefore let no one boast in, in men, for all things are yours. 22, it says that whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things, present, present all things to come. It says that all things are yours. And then take the 23 very serious. It says that, and you are Christ. As you are sitting down, you are Christ. And Christ is God. It says that you are Christ. And Christ is God. So if it tells us that the, the, this one that is going to be born is going to reign. And his reign has no end. That means this person was Christ. And if you are sitting here and the Bible is telling us that you are Christ. That means that you your, your, your reign, there is no end to it. Hallelujah. Amen. If you believe that, you could have shouted better for him. Amen. Amen. And then he went on to say, from 34, he said that then Mary said to the angel, how can this thing be, since I do not know a man? 35, and the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. As I'm speaking to you right now, you are going to experience the power of the Holy Spirit as never before, because he's going to overshadow you. He says that therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. So in the sixth month, which is the Adar, which the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary with power and he conceived uh, at that point, Elizabeth has also become pregnant, and that was the sixth month of her. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. 36. Now, indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. I just want you to take this very seriously. Say that with God, nothing will be impossible. So there is nothing that you came today that you are planning to do tomorrow. Or couples of moms and that you are thinking that is too beyond your imagination. It says that with God, all things, with God, with God, nothing is impossible. With God, all things are possible. If you have not yet believed him wholly, I want you to believe him wholly because with him, all things are possible. Amen. 38 says, then Mary said, behold, the maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Remember, the angel Gabriel this said to her that the Holy Spirit is going to overshadow you. And when that happens, power will come, up, will come upon you. And then, as the angel said, the power, he was, she was overshadowed with the, with the Holy Spirit, with the power. But here, the Mary, we did not see Mary shaking or Mary, um, uh, they call it falling under the anointing. It did not happen today. What I'm trying to say to you is that wherever you gather and people are called, that anyone who is needing this receive the Holy Spirit now. It is not all the time that you have to fall under. But here the Bible is telling us when Mary was told, it says that it should happen to me as you have said. So she believed in her heart and she conceived. The Holy Spirit overshadowed her. What I'm trying to say is that wherever you go and there is something that you want to take hold of it, just believe in your heart. Whether you fall or you do not fall, that does not matter. But it's your heart that you receive is the most important thing. 
Hallelujah. So today, whether you fall or you do not fall, whatever he is bringing, he is making available to each one. Believe that you have received it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. 38. He said that then Mary said, Behold, my maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. 39. Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah. 40. And I entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greetings of Mary that the babe lived in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. See, Mary had been overshadowed with the Holy Spirit. So and when she came in contact with Elizabeth, she gave her greetings and all after the greetings, also Elizabeth was also filled with the Holy Spirit as well. What, um, what it means is that if we are indeed being filled with the Holy Spirit and we have believed him totally, we have yielded to him totally, it means that any of our spheres have to be subject to this Holy Spirit as well. Hallelujah. Are you with me at all? 40, 44, and then he said that then she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this greeted to me? That the mother of my Lord shall come to me. So, this, let me finish reading. So, for indeed, 44, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. 45, blessed is she who believed. He said, blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. So everything centers on Mary's believing. Everything about our Christian walk is about believing. Hallelujah. So this tells us, as we read in John, how this word became flesh. It tells us that the, this word was able or it became flesh because the, the Lord sent Injil Gabriel and the Injil Gabriel came. The Injil Gabriel spoke a word. He spoke a word to Mary. And then out of that, the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary and Mary conceived. He, she conceived Jesus Christ of Nazareth who later on came to die. She, the Holy Spirit was the word. Are we together? Amen. Amen. Then John, 1 John 5 from 6. He says that this is he who came by water and blood, which is Jesus Christ. Then he went on to say, not by water, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit who bears witness because the spirit is true. The spirit is true. This spirit that we are talking about, remember that without the Holy Spirit coming, overshadowing Mary, if that did not happen, the son, which is Jesus Christ, wouldn't have come into this world. So, the Holy Spirit needed to come and then engage in the conception of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But here is telling us that this is he who came by water and blood. Then it went on to say, and the Spirit who who the Spirit bear witnesses, because the Spirit is true. Seven, for there are three that bear witnesses in heaven. It says the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. 
So the word, the Father, and the Holy Spirit, they are all one. They are all, there is, they all have equal powers, equal attributes. The, the, the way they have listed them does not mean one is a higher, one is lower. They are all the same. And he said that these three are one. Then he went on to say eight, and there are three that, that bear witness on earth. The Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, who initiated the conception of Jesus Christ, who overshadowed Mary, and then the water, the water also means the word, and also the blood. And he says that these three agree as one. So, the word, the spirit, and then the blood, these are all one. So, as we are on earth, we need the Holy Spirit, but then in the order for the Holy Spirit to function in our life, we need the word. Because it is this word that the Holy Spirit drives on. Because he is truth. Because he said that spirit is truth. The truth is the word. So if you are going to function on the earth, you have to know your truth. Because in order for him to work, uh, in order for him, for you to, for him to be your partner, you have to know him well. Hallelujah. You have to know him well. So without the word, it will be difficult to enter the spiritual realm because each one of us carry our own realms. Wherever we go, we carry our own atmospheres. Hallelujah. But the more we know, the more we know the truth, the more we are able to engage, the more we are able to have communion with the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit can tell you to go and read this. He will never engage you when you, when you sit on the TV, watch um, 400 episodes of whatever it is, season one, season four, season five, or season thousand. You will never experience him. He will never do anything for you. But he, still, he will still be in you. But that will not be the platform that he flourishes. He flourishes on the word. That is the truth. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Remember in John 4, 21, the Bible says, the Bible says, woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you, when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. 22, you, you Samaritan worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know. For salvation is from the Jews. 23, yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. And then he went on to say, God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in the spirit and in truth. So he said that the time is coming, and the time has now come, that, that the worshipers will worship the Father in spirit, which is truth. So you can only worship the Father in the spirit if only you have grounds of the truth. Because the word is truth. The word, the word, the word is truth. And then the word is truth. And it's telling us that the word is truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Father is the Spirit. Or God is is the spirit. And he says that if he, he is requiring worshipers who will worship him in spirit and in truth. You cannot worship the father in your own 
understanding. Yes, you can babble and say things that you want to say, but it says that the way to worship me, that you worship me in the spirit, but your worshiping through the spirit must be the content of the truth. Because whenever you do that, that is where the Holy Spirit is able to help you. Hallelujah. For example, if you are saying the Holy Spirit to help you, what is the scriptural basis that you are basing your request on? Your request should be, he says that I'm going. And if I go, I'll send a helper. So you tell him that I know that I, you have been sent and you are my helper. This thing that I, I'm doing, ah, I need your help because you are my helper. If it is the Lord that you want to worship him, you tell him that I know that my voice cannot reach you. But as I'm speaking, I know that you are spirit, you are my helper. You, through you, my voice, my request can reach the Father. That is how you do it. Hallelujah. It says that the spirit... You worship the Father in spirit and in truth. These are the kind of worshiper that he's looking for. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And then 2 Corinthians 3, 6. He says, Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit. Where, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And then he went on to say, but we all with an unveiled faces, behold us in the mirror. The glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the spirit of the Lord. What he's trying to tell us is that in the, uh, the Old Testament, they had a veil are because of the, the, the covenant and Jesus Christ has come, he has died and he uh, because of him, this veil has been taken away. But anytime you become saved, you um, use Romans 10, 9, then you are saved. So anytime you accept the Lord as your savior and the lordship over your life, this veil has been taken away. But what is telling, to t telling us is that whenever that happens to us, we have a journey that we are being transformed every day. But that transformation is done by the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit cannot transform you if you are not aware of the truth. That is not, it's not, it's, it, it will not happen. But if you are align yourself with the truth, because remember, the Holy Spirit flourishes or the Holy Spirit is the truth then things will be in line with how he wants you to be transformed or you transform according to how he wants us to be. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Are we together? Yes. But this transformation, because there is a more height that we need to go. Remember in the beginning, in Genesis, we were created in the image and the likeness of our Lord. This, the life that we are living here, that is not the kind of life that he wants us to live. He wants us to live a higher life. And that higher life can be only be done if we know the truth. Because knowing the truth is knowing the Holy Spirit. The more you know the truth, the more you know the Spirit. The more you know the Word, the more you know the Son. The more you know the Father. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And then John 3, 34 also says that for the one whom God has sent, speak the words of God. So if God has sent you, you are not here by accident. You are not on earth by accident. But if God has sent you, then you have to speak his words. Speaking his words means that you have to align yourself with what the scripture says. It needs for you to sit down. And read and understand. Get yourself truth. Because you armor yourself with the truth. So that anything comes your way. You have a spiritual backing on the truth. When, you, when something happens to you. And you really understand the scripture. That you are basing whatever belief you are believing on. 
the Holy Spirit cannot deny. He has to fulfill that thing very quickly because he knows that you know what you know. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So 35 of John 3 says, the father, oh no, I did not finish reading it. He says, I'm reading the John 3, 34 again. He said, for the, for the one whom God has sent, speak the words of God. For God gives the spirit without limit. So if the Holy Spirit is not going to be limited in your life, that means you have to speak the words of God. You have to know the truth. Because all the word, the truth, the Holy Spirit, the Father, they are all one. Are we together? Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 35 says, the Father loved the Son and has placed everything in his hand. 36, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. But whoever rejects the Son will not see life. For God's wrath remain on them. Remember that the more you know the truth, the more you know the word, the more you speak the words of God, it builds up your faith. Remember the Bible tells us that the just shall live. By faith. In Habakkuk 2, 2 4 and Hebrews 10 38, it tells us that the just shall live by faith. But you cannot live by faith if you do not hear. As the Bible says that in Romans 10 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. I know that we normally come up with this scripture, but I just want you to pause here. It says that, it says, so faith comes from hearing, and that is hearing the good news about Christ. That is, the message about Christ is the truth, is the good news, is the word, because he himself is the word. Amen. Amen. So, how do you hear? If you take a scripture, how do you hear? Because it is not all the time that you'll be able to hear somebody preaching, which, which may be aligned with the just saying that it comes by hearing. Because we hear when there is an audio on. I know in the Jesus Christ days, Probably, I think those days there were no DVDs. There were no, um, uh, how do we call them, TVs. There was probably, there will be no, um, the audios, um, the cine, home cinema, home theaters, for, or the, probably there will be no um, intermittent preaching here and there that you have to be hearing all the time. So what does this hearing mean at all? It means that when you take the scripture, you must hear when you are reading it yourself. You must hear what the scripture is saying. The hearing means that if you take the scripture as it is there, as our man of God was teaching us, the, the, you, you take the, how do you consummate the vital part of this message? The, the, what you are reading. Because what, if you are able to hear, it becomes your truth. If you are able to hear, that means that your faith is, you are inquiring great faith. Remember, because the Bible tells us that in 1 Corinthians um, 12, the Bible tells us that the source of all spiritual gifts is the Holy Spirit. And then the 9 of 1 Corinthians 12, 9 tells us that he gives faith 
great faith or he gives faith as he will. The same God gives great faith or the same God gives the gift of faith. All that I'm trying to say amount to your understanding to draw on is that if he is the source, if you read NLT, it says that he is the source of all spiritual gifts. That means that he himself, Holy Spirit himself, is faith. Because if the word that you hear lead to faith, and he himself is the source of faith, that means that whenever you are building yourself with the truth, which he says that anyone who has been sent have to speak the word, it means that your dependence should be on the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So, if the Holy Spirit is the one who have the diverse of different gifts, which faith is one of them, and it tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of the Lord, then that means that we have to sit down when we are reading to be able to take the vital part of the scripture that we read because the spirit is truth. The spirit is the word. The, the word is truth. You can only worship him in truth and in spirit. So you have to take notice of it. Otherwise, you will not be able to enjoy this Holy Spirit that we are talking about. His food in like um, uh, a reduced sense is the word. He thrives on this word. Is the word that will only quicken him. For example, if your body is feeling one kind and you don't really understand that in Romans 8, that it says, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus Christ from the dead, what actually have you heard from that message? Is it because that you've been hearing that people are quoting, that is why you are also quoting? Or is it because that you actually understand it? If you really understand this and you tell him, Holy Spirit, if you really know who this person is and you tell him, you I know that you did it for Jesus. Mine is not a big problem. I know that you have taken this away. It, 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 it can't take long. It can't take long. It have to give way because he is our helper. Remember, he, the word, the Lord, the Holy Spirit, they are all one in equality. So whenever you involve him, he have to, he have to. Hallelujah. Away together. Amen. 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 So whenever you are reading the Bible, the Bible, we Christians, it's not a storybook that we read. It is not just, it's not a novel. Or it is not just because my dad or my mom or my brother is telling me to read. I have to quickly read it so that I will please them. No, it is our life. You have, even if it is just one verse that you will be able to read a day, make sure that you really understand it and apply it to your life. That is what it is. The Bible we read is our life. The more you apply this to your life, your faith increases. He says that he gives great faith to men, the gift of faith. When you read and depend on it, you, you have, because the word is the truth, you have already boosted yourself with this gift of the great faith in you. You don't need anybody to come around you to do what you are supposed to do because you have already built yourself already. Hallelujah. I hope what I'm saying makes sense. Amen. So, we depend on the word of the Lord 
totally. It is everything that we have. It is everything, everything that we have. Remember, if I say everything, I mean everything. When Jesus Christ needed money, because we have been trained in this fallen world, that we have relied on the fallen things, we don't believe things. When Jesus Christ needed money to pay the tax collectors, he spoke the word and money came. When Jesus Christ needed to feed multitude of people, he also needed to, he spoke and the food multiplied. Imagine if it comes to a time that now they are blocking people, even if you are a Christian, you can't go to the street to preach, but other people are allowed to worship on the street. If it comes that people uh, does not want to um, give you food because of what you believe in, how are you going to survive on that day? How are you going to survive in that period? Remember, Elijah, Elijah, he was a man that Obadiah could say that I have been a Christ, I have known God from my youth. And then I know that their spirit takes you to and fro. Meaning that this Elijah was, been, was moved by the Holy Spirit. When he needed, he, he himself uh, prayed for, for, for rain not to come. The, the Lord gave him ravens to feed him. So it tells us that anything that we are looking for, us on earth, all these things are byproduct. The byproduct means that the more you get closer to the Lord, the more he blesses with you with other things. Because he says that even if these people on earth who are even fallen men knows how to go give to give good gifts to his children, how much more me? He says that ask, whoever ask, receive. But the asking, it should be based on what you have heard from the scriptures, what you have read, what you have seen, and what you have believed in your heart. Amen. I always tell these children that you have to be, pay, be because nowadays the, the other fallen world children believe that Harry Potter, the things that they were doing, they want to experiment it is normal in nowadays. Schools, they are teaching witchcraft. So it will come to a point that when you go to the office, they will be performing those things in front of you. But if you, you are as a Christian, you have not built yourself enough, how are you going to survive? So what we say here is not only for us, but it is for your own good. Amen. Amen. Then Romans 12 says, and so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. He says, let them be a living and a holy sacrifice. He said, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behaviors or the behavior and the custom of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. It is only on the premises of the word, it is only on the premises of the truth that you can be transformed into the person that God wants you to, to be. And you've been transformed to know more about you yourself, how good and pleasant and the perfect that your life will be. And all these things, they are, our helper is ready to help us. But you cannot say you are my helper for the whole day and not build up yourself with any scripture. The word of the Lord, the truth is the food that we eat every day. As we eat food to feed our fallen man, our flesh, we need the word of the Lord, which is the truth, to feed our spirit in us. Remember, the Bible says 
this Holy Spirit is indwelling in us. If the Holy Spirit is indwelling in you, 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 don't, you need <laughs> the physical food is for the body, but the truth that he tries on, he needs it all the time. He does not need it to grow himself, but he needs it for the perfection of you, you as a Christian, as a believer. So that when men see you, they could say that of a truth, this person is not an ordinary. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, if we as Christians, this is the time of the Holy Spirit. This, the dispensation of the Father has passed. We are in the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. The Son will come after he returns. But remember, in Joel, this prophecy has gone forth about this Holy Spirit. The reason why we are not able to receive or we are not able to tap what we need is that we have not been yielded to the truth. Because if you know the truth and then you can ask, you can worship the Father in spirit and in truth. You can worship fellowship or you can have communion with the Holy Spirit. If only you know the truth. Hallelujah. So I want to encourage you that we will go out to evangelize. And as we are going, whoever comes your way who is sick, because of the truth that you know, and you have aligned yourself with the truth, any person you pray for, that person will be healed. Any issue you encounter, you will dispense it. Because remember, when Mary, as we read in Luke, when Mary was overshadowed with the Holy Spirit, immediately he, she came in contact with Elizabeth. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit was also, uh, Elizabeth was also filled with the Holy Spirit. So Mary dispensed the, what she has, what she is carrying. I believe that because she was overshadowed with the Holy Spirit, that is why she was aligned with the things that Jesus Christ could do. That is why he could tell them, whatever this person tells you to do, do it. Because he, she herself has been overshadowed and the Holy Spirit was on her or upon her or in her. Hallelujah. Amen. Please, I just want you to be on your feet right now. Today, next week, we will be uh, in Goshen uh, because of the conference. Sunday will be the final day. Today is also our Thanksgiving day. But remember, the Bible says in Philippians 4, it says, says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. Everything you do, thank him with thanksgiving. Anything that we do, thanksgiving. When I was preparing, I specifically heard that because this match is the month of Adar. I didn't know what it's for, but then I didn't know I was reading, and I was directed that what actually do you know about this six months? What does it mean? And then I went to <laughs> get more information about what the six month means, and it's Adar. And in this time, is the time that Jesus Christ was conceived. And is the power and the strength. Remember, at this point in time, when the Holy Spirit came, Mary was overshadowed with power. She was overshadowed with the Holy Spirit. And uh, because of the Holy Spirit, she was able to dispense the Holy Spirit as well. 
And not only that, because of the presence of the Holy Spirit in her life, the Bible says that she was highly favored. Being, a, being having a favor of the Lord means that wherever you go, yes, there are sometimes you get um, people who have been constrained, but that's not what I'm talking about. But people could sense the favor, the presence of the Lord concerning your life. And this is the hour, this is the moment. So I just want you to thank him. And the thanksgiving is that today marks the same six hour Ada, which is March when the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary. What you are thanking the Holy Spirit is that I've become aware of this today. The same, the Bible tells us that Jesus Christ is the same today and forever, meaning that the Holy Spirit is also the same. He was yesterday, and he will be the same forever. He does not change. He is the he who overshadowed Mary. He is still here to overshadow you as well. Any areas, anything that you are looking for, remember in 1 Corinthians 12, the Bible says that is the Holy Spirit is the source of all spiritual gifts. He is the source of working of miracles. He is the source of the gift of healing. Healing. He is the source of diverse speaking in tongues. He is the source of discernment of spirit. He is the same spirit. He gives us according to as he wills. Right now, lift up your voice and begin to thank him. Begin to thank him. Thank him. Thank him. And you are thanking him that you have received. He, he has overshadowed you. Remember, the Holy Spirit, you have it. But you need more of him. Lake a telebreak a parabadia, a secretary a pantelebedia, oh, Prataya secretary a pantelebada, a lebreta a secretary a pampalabadia, a secretary a parabran telebede, lebede, a secretary a pampalabadia, oh, Krapakati a secretary, oh, lebete lebreta a secretary, a yeke parabran telebedia, a pantelabada.
that we are talking about sometimes it could mean so many things in your ears but I believe that the Lord the Holy Spirit have directed the message towards you but if you are fellowshipping with us online or you are here and you don't know this Jesus that we are talking about it will be difficult for the Holy Spirit to work in your life or to be a partner of you 
Because this person has been sent to the called out ones. This person has been sent to those who are saved. This person has been sent to the people who have accepted Jesus Christ as their personal savior. And the Holy, the Lord Jesus is their Lord over their life. If you are such a person here and you want to know this the person that we are talking about, we live this life which is a practical life. I want you to, to raise up your hand wherever you are so that we will they help you to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. You will accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. If you are one like that, you can lift up your hands and we pray together. But if you are fellowshiping with us online and you want to know this Jesus and enjoy the person that has been given unto us the person of the Holy Spirit. I want you to, if you have a Bible with you, Romans 10, 9. Romans 10, 9. I want you to say this after me. You can mention your name wherever you are. The Bible says that, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So you say this after me. I, you put your name, then I confess with the, my, my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. Thank you. Today, become Lord over my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, hallelujah. Amen. 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 Please, thank you, Lord, for our offerings. We know that the saints, the saints are the most expensive givers. We thank you for their life. As they give, Lord, Accept their offering. Amen. Amen. And I also pray over the communion. Lord, we thank you that we know your word says we should do this in remembrance of you. We know is your word. We know your word is true. And your word says that anytime we eat the communion is life. Therefore, anything that we do not know that is going on in our system, as we eat this body and drink this blood, we change, we replace it with our system. In the name of Jesus, we immune ourselves with your body and with your blood. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. I also pray... Please, when you have it, you can have it. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not sure if you have been blessed at all. Shout a big hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. If I were you, I would concentrate on the Ada, which is the sixth man that Jesus was conceived, because we are still in it, and you can still 
be having fellowship with the Holy Spirit, having communion with him, because he is the one who was able to enforce or to make sure that the son is conceived in Mary's womb. So he is responsible for that. Anything of overshadowing of more of himself, he is the one who can make it happen in your life. And we need more of him in these days. But he says that, that when the time comes, he will pour it out. The pouring is not difficult. It has been poured. But to us align ourselves is the most important thing. Hallelujah. And I'm praying and then we will end the service. Lord, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for such a blissful month. We know that you are with us. You are in us. And we know that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Because you will be, you are abiding in us forever. Whatever we go through, you go through with us. We thank you that this week, it is you who made favor, became available for Mary. Even the boy Jesus obtained favor before men and before God. And you were the architect of it. I pray that anyone who is hearing my voice today here, I declare that this week they will go out and come back again with testimonies beyond the imagination of what they have desired or what they have asked for. Lord Jesus, I declare that they will not lack anything in their life. In the name of Jesus, anyone struggling, you our helper. Father, our helper, Holy Spirit, sort that out for that person. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I just want you to say one sweet word to the person sitting beside you and have a blissful week.